Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and let's dive into the topic of talking about different firewall options. And this is going to have a lot of qualifiers around it. This is April of 2023 when I'm making this list. These are the firewalls on this list, at least that I have direct experience or at least some indirect experience through friends with. And that's one of the big qualifiers is it's impractical and hard to try to list all the popular firewalls and that's going to be uh, the controversial one as i learned on twitter when i posted some of these questions of people want me to review their favorite firewall and if it's your favorite firewall keep using it if it's happy if it's secure and it works well for you i don't have any reason to tell you not to use those i wanted to offer some knowledge on the what we use and the qualifying list here comes down to things we use a lot of course pf sense being that list and things that some of my trusted it friends that we work closely with do use as well. Now, a little background on myself here. We are an IT services company and a managed services company, as in we are outside IT for other businesses. We manage about 50 PF senses in different businesses uh, that we also do consulting with those businesses. Some of those have internal IT teams. Now expanded from that, we also have co-managed IT. We do as in they have an internal IT department, but farm out some of the work to us. And we have a lot of those clients using things like 48. Not that we're managing their 48, but we know they manage their 48. We're usually there managing, let's say their servers or some virtualization or some storage. So I have interaction with a lot of these firewalls that are on the list here. Uh, with the exception of a little bit of Meraki, I have less interaction with them. And the same thing with, um, the 48, it's less interaction, but worth listing on there because I had my friend Jason Slagle go over the list and say, yeah, we definitely use these. We like them. You've seen them on the channel before. And then I also had Christian Lempa and I have a few other IT friends that really like the Sofo system. So I threw it on there, but I just don't work with those a lot, but I, at least for a comparison list, have it on there. And people who are familiar with my channel know my bias towards PFSense because it's a very popular solution. One thing I will say right off the Bat here though, when it comes to PFSense, I listed it as just PFSense, but yes, there's two versions, PFSense and PFSense Plus, uh, PFSense CE, I should say, which is community edition, the open source version. PFSense Plus is basically that same version with a few extra add-ons on there. And this is a topic that, you know, people say, well, aren't you now talking about PFSense, but closed source? If you look, they're kind of developed in tandem, but they do release the PFSense Plus editions first. Uh, that is just the way they do things. Uh, PFSense, the NetGate people behind it are big at supporting upstream BSD. They write some of the drivers and do a lot of the integrations. Uh, they have wonderful documentation. That's one of the reasons I've been such a longtime user of PFSense. But without you know getting too far into it, I will mention OpenSense is not on the list because I just don't interact with it from a business standpoint. I don't have any problem though. If you would like to use OpenSense, this is where the Twitter controversies by me not having it on there, uh, people seem to assume that I have some dislike for it. I just don't use it. It does have more frequent updates, uh, but they're both actively developed projects. PFSense, uh, the 2.7 CE, which is close to final release, is based on FreeBSD 14. I believe OpenSense is on FreeBSD 13, uh, but both of those are current. And if you go to PFN, PFSense Plus, that's currently on uh, 14, that's current as well. So there are updates to it. They're just less frequently. OpenSense seems to be really popular in the home lab world because it has like more packages and I get that, but from a business management standpoint, and that's where a lot of my experience comes from is using these in businesses, not just testing in a lab. So the real world usage, I just don't run into the open sense as much and having to manage something that has a lot of updates can be challenging. Now it is my understanding lightly, and I looked a little bit, there is a business version of open sense, which has a slightly different path with a few extra features, but I've never used it. I didn't want to buy a license just to test something because that testing would be still once again in the lab. I don't have time to tear down large infrastructure. We have site to site VPNs, etc., and see how OpenSense performs. So if you want to use it, keep going. If you're happy with it, keep using it. Uh, my preference is for PFSense. And let's dive into the details of the list I have over here. We got PFSense. Arista Untangle. So Arista bought Untangle and they've continued on with the product. I believe they renamed it Arista Edge by still see Untangle in a few places. I think um, that branding is still there, though. If you look for my old videos, they all say Untangle. Maybe I'll do an updated video on it at some point uh, since it's been bought. But they still have been maintaining the project. It's still a popular uh, firewall. And I have some friends that are gold partners in it. We don't have that many clients on it, but we have a few. And it seems to work well and it's very trouble free. USG, 
UXG and the UDM Pro, UDM Pro SC. I grouped these together separately as opposed to just calling it Unify because these have very different functionalities. And even UDM Pro and Pro SC, there's some differences there. You could probably throw in the Unify Dreamwall on there to be more like a Pro SC. The Unifies are really popular in the market, but there's definitely some shortcomings we'll be talking about there. 48, Sophos, and Meraki. You can't ignore Meraki's presence, especially in the IT services market. So I threw them on here as a list. Um, I also can't ignore the controversies around Meraki, not just the pricing, but occasionally Meraki going around people. I've got links uh, that are in the description if you want to dive into some of that. And contacting customers directly is the going around, as in you have to be a reseller to get Meraki. And then if they contact your customers directly to cut you out, not the first time I've heard of Meraki doing it, but it recently happened again. So I didn't want to ignore or pretend the controversy doesn't happen with them. Next is the features here. Can run on your own hardware. With PFSense, it's a yes. Arrest on Tangle, yes. And no, no here. You're only going to run it on the Unify hardware when you're running Unify equipment. 48, same thing. You don't get to just load it up uh, as a device. You're going to have to use the 48 hardware. Sophos, though, is a software-based firewall. They do have appliances, just like PFSense does. So yes, you can uh, load it up yourself or virtualize it, which is the next category. And Rocky's a no on both of those. The virtualize, I've virtualized PFSense mostly for lab use, but you can use it in production. I'm partial to using direct hardware, but it's an option. Same thing with uh, the Arista. I'm partial to using hardware, but yes, it can be virtualized. Uh, you're tied to the hardware when it comes to the Unify line. And the 48, I put yes, but a link to how they do virtualization. That way you have that information available to you for the page they have already talked about virtualized ones. And Christian Lumpa has a video on Sophos and virtualizing Sophos. Central management's a big thing that comes up when you're doing this from a business standpoint, not just a home user. And PFSense doesn't have anything natively they offer. Our solution to this is have our clients PFSense's VPN back to us. This allows us to get to their web interfaces, but not create any tunnels between them. So there's no lateral movement that can happen from a security standpoint. This is what scares me with some of the third-party ones out there where people say, let's just put SSH keys in so we can have one central place to automatically manage it. You're also creating one central place where someone could mass change firewalls without a second level of authentication, depending on how that's done. So something to take in consideration. There's nothing official from Netgate on this. The one from Arista does work in a way where it just creates a tunnel back, essentially like a proxy, where it just brings you to the login page of each device and gives you the status of those devices. So their central management is nice. Unify, if you have the USG, UXG via their controller, the Unify controller acts as the central management for multi-sites on there. It's a multi-tenant controller. So you can have many clients in there if you want. Uh, yes, via the UI site. So each one of the Dream Machines has or even the dream wall they run the unify controller software within it and then you can tie it to unify's portal which just brings you to the page on there through, through central management through the unify system so they do have a way of handling that uh, 48 has their central management system sophos does and so does meraki web interfaces yes for pfsense and tangle uh, via the unify controller even though it's built into the dream machine series it's still the Unify controller software running with inside of it. So you're not exactly interacting with the firewall uh, natively. You do it through the Unify software. 48, yes, has a system. So does Sophos and Meraki is pretty much via their site. There's very basic things you can do on a Meraki. Uh, you don't really get doing advanced configurations. I think it just has some troubleshooting things you can do when you get to the web interface of a Meraki firewall. Uh, it's designed really to be managed through their site. Licensing fees. PFSense comes in community edition, and plus the community edition is free the open source edition the plus edition can be registered for free for home users and lab use so there's not actually any license fees but you can also buy support packages if you want when you're running it on your own hardware if you buy netgate hardware there's no license fee hence a little asterisk there so if you buy any of the netgate appliances you get the pfsense plus edition and a limited amount of support and there's no license fees ever it's perpetual there's no renewals on this Arista, they're a little bit more mixed. That's why I said some features. This is a link that takes you to a comparison chart to what you get for free versus what requires extra licensing, paid licensing versus just free registration. Because you do have to uh, do some registration if you want to use the Untangle. It's not just download and go. There's, I believe, a registration page you have to set up on there. Uh, no license or registration is tied to the hardware, technically, uh, to make any of the firewall functions work. 48 
yes, they definitely have licenses. Uh, Sophos has a free for home edition. And Meraki is not just licensed. Uh, they're licensed, and I believe it just stops working when there's no licenses. Uh, they're they don't have no home or free edition that I'm aware of. Maybe they do, but I didn't see it when I was looking. Uh, they do have some basic models, and you can get some uh, like special reseller extra licenses, I think, once you are a registered reseller, but I'm not going to get too off topic on that. Operating systems. PFSense is going to be based on FreeBSD, currently FreeBSD 14. Uh, then we have Linux, and I put Linux on all these, but technically they're very custom versions of Linux. They're not like Linux, and then they loaded some piece of software on top to make them a firewall, but they are at least Linux-based at the uh, underlying OS. Supports high availability. Yes and yes on the Arista and on the PFSense. No and no on either model of these. I know it's been in the coming in the future, but I don't know when that future is. Maybe you're watching it when they actually release this, but that's not a feature that they offer is a, a full HA where one firewall can fail over to another. Uh, yes on these ones here. BGP OSPF. There's actually quite a bit of features around this with the PFSense as, an, as one of the packages they have to uh, control this. Uh, but this is where sometimes you may have a little bit of a nuance. Too. You have this in PFSense, you have this in Arista. It's limited what you can do in Meraki. I forget what the limitations are. You have to do some digging to figure out because it may ch it changes from model to model, as I was told. Um, 48, yes, and Sophos is yes. But this is where you can start to say, okay, but does it do the exact way I want it to or the full features? That was where... We'll say yes, it has it, but it, eh, the details are going to be dig into it. If you have a BGP use case, dig into it first. SD-WAN. There is no SD-WAN option for PFSense. Arista Untangle has an SD-WAN option that integrates into Untangle. Um, nothing I'm aware of for the Unify line. 48 has their own integrates with their firewall SD-WAN options. So does Sophos and so does Meraki. OpenVPN. PFSense uses normal OpenVPN. It's interoperable with standard OpenVPN clients. And for the most part, Untangle is as well. Arista Untangle can do OpenVPN. Uh, they have, uh, I've done videos on this where I've talked about their implementation. I actually like that, yes, they actually have the full version of OpenVPN that you can use a rolling TOTP in versus it's done differently in PFSense. So nuance kind of matters to some people of if you're using uh, TOTP authentication uh, with those, they implement it differently, but it is at least still OpenVPN. Very basic uh, OpenVPN, and it seems to be that they've included more OpenVPN. I've not done a lot of testing on here, uh, and it's only EA if you use the Pro. This is where Unify can be very tricky to do this because Unify themselves do not list nice charts for features across their firewalls that are easily found. And even Cody from MacTelcom Networks, who does a lot of videos on here, me and Cody were talking, and as Cody said, you just have to take and read the notes for each version release and see what applies to your firewall. And he's not wrong. Unify does not do a great job of nuance to figure out what features are supported. And right now it's only on the EA as of April 1st of 2023 when I did my testing on this. Uh, 48 does not have OpenVPN in there. Sophos has a, their own custom implementation of it and Meraki does not either. IPsec, yes, that is a paid feature on Arista. So that's back to the licensing fees. You can only get it with the paid version. Um, yes, they both have IPsec on the Unify line, 48 all the way across. IPsec pretty popular. WireGuard, yes on PFSense, paid on Arista Tangle, no, but yes, but yes, but is the way I'd put it on here. Um, their WireGuard implementation is a little bit confusing, uh, and I think it's also on their normal implementation. They have their teleport version of it, which is designed to tie to phones, but it's a little confusing, um, and I don't, it's not, they're getting towards, I know at some point when they hit full release here, it's supposed to be like a more, nor more normal WireGuard implementation. So. Make sure it fits your use case if you're looking into one of these and you have a desire to use WireGuard. Uh, 48 does not, neither does Sophos or Meraki. L2TP, uh, once again, paid feature. They do have this on the Unifies. Uh, please note there are certain limitations with L2TP. Uh, it's why it's not the most popular VPN, but it is... I should say not the most popular. It's a popular VPN, but can cause challenges when you have two users behind the same IP address. This is something that where you try to get a couple people VPNed in, you'll go, wait, there's some conflicts as L2TP doesn't like when people come from the same IP address. That is a problem you run into um, with home users, and especially if they're in the same area provided by CGNAT, for example, you can break things. This is one that is a yes for only for PFSense, and someone may think I'm biased for putting on there, but there's no denying Tailscale's popularity. It has grown 
immensely. Uh, I know Zero Tier is kind of a competing product that I could have listed on here, but it would just be no across the board. Zero Tier is not in any of these. But Tailscale, with a lot of commercial backers and a really good product, has become really popular. I love that they integrated into PFSense. That's actually why PFSense chose that. I know there's been requests and there's third-party ways to get Zero Tier and PFSense, but Nonetheless, I've done videos on both Zero Tier and Tailscale. I think they're both great solutions. Uh, it's just nice, and I wanted to throw it out there that, yes, they are integrated in here. Intrusion detection, intrusion prevention systems. With PFSense, this is going to be a manual process. You can load Sericata or Snort. You can turn on all the rules. You're going to get some false positives. You're going to have to do some investigating how that goes for you. This is something I've done a video on for tuning Sericata, but just so you know, it's not like just set it, forget it, and it just works, and it's very automated with everything like the rule updates are automated you can buy pro rules and put them in there but it's still kind of on you to determine the threat investigation they've filtered the rules a little bit differently when you get them from arista and tingle so theirs is i would say a little bit smoother because it's part of the feed you're getting from arista but there still can be some false positives depending on rule settings on there it's very basic inside the uh, unify and usg series so they have it but it's kind of basic also some people I'm a little fuzzy on exactly what speed penalties there are for turning it on. This is going to vary provided based on the hardware you have uh, with both of these ones here because you're providing your hardware. 48 will have as well uh, Meraki specs on turning it on and what the throughput would be with those features. And Sophos, once again, if you're running on your own hardware or if you buy the Sophos boxes, you know, you're going to get varied amounts of speed hitting on that. So worth noting. I put content filtering, and this is where people tell me, but yes, it does have it. I would not use it. We do not plan on using it. or plan, This is why I don't do videos on how to set up Squid or anything like that. I think it's a headache. Um, I think it's complicated to manage. I don't find it simple. Uh, it always seems to have lots of bugs in it and requires too much management time. So we just don't use it. We use endpoint filtering for those of you wondering. A tool called Zeros. Got a video on my channel for it, Z-O-R-U-S. Um, Untangle does a pretty good job of it. Uh, they can do basic DPI or full SSL inspection, but when it gets over here to like the USG, they're just doing DPI, no SSL. So there's no certificates to install. They do basic DPI inspection and uh, that's about it. The 40 gate Sophos and Meraki all have where they can do more advanced levels of it. Uh, they can get deeper into some of the application level filtering, for example. PF Blocker is probably really popular because you can use things like pie hole feeds into it. You can still run a pie hole with PF Sense or any of these firewalls if you want. But with PF Blocker, you can choose the feeds. You can have it all in one device. I don't think there's anything wrong with the pie hole project, but out of convenience, if that's something you want to run, having that built in is nice. There's some DNS level filtering you can do in there. It's really basic what DNS filtering you can do in the USG UDM Pro, uh, 48, Sofo, so have it. But I don't think you can put your own custom feeds in any of these models that I'm aware of. I could be wrong about that. I didn't put an asterisk on it, but I know they have a level of DNS filtering. I just don't know if you can do custom feeds. You can do custom lists, like you put things in there, but not the same as putting like a feed, an active feed like you can in PF Blocker. GOIP traffic filtering that is also facilitated through PF Blocker. It's a feature in there. There's a beta feature for this in the Unify line. Um, then we have 48, yes, yes, and so forth. So I'll have GOIP option. Traffic shaping. Traffic shaping, there is a lot of advanced options inside of PF Sense for this. Same thing with the Rust Untangle. It's a more of a basic on or off in the Unify line. They don't have, I don't believe, any type of granular control. Maybe in the future they'll have something better on that. I, but I would list it as there, but basic. Uh, 48. Sophos, Meraki all have this. Multi-WAN support. It always feels weird that this is a paid version of Arista Untangle needed for this, but hey, if you want to use dual WAN and do different load balancing between them, that is a paid option for them. Of course, in PF Sense, I got videos on this. It's uh, hard to put this without just an asterisk. It's very basic, the control levels you have over the USG and the UDM series on this. I wouldn't call it wonderful. I would call it usable, but you know, uh, They've gotten a little bit better over time with it, but it's still not as granular controlled uh, as you have in like PF Sense or even the other firewalls like 48, Sophos, and Meraki. SNMP monitoring, yes, across the board. That can be turned on all of them. Active Directory integration, yes, Radius or LDAP. Paid feature here, they actually have a really nice integrator uh, for this. And the reason you have Active Directory integration is usually going to be because you want to take your VPN authentication and your Active Directory users and pair those up so you're not managing separate lists uh, via Radius, both with the Unify line uh, and yes, integration over here. Policy routing. 
lots of policy routing options, very advanced ones within your PFSense. Yes, within the Untangle. Yes, within the USG. Um, but this is where it gets funny in specific like WireGuard. Last I checked, there was still no ability to do WireGuard policy routing, which is uh, kind of uh, could be a challenge if you're trying to set up a WireGuard site to site. And you're like, but I can't do a policy route for that for a site to site. Um, so once again, you got to dive into the details of it. But for IPsec, for example, they do offer the ability to do policy routing with some of the IPsec on there. Uh, with FortiGate and Sophos, they have it. And I didn't put no WireGuard here because, well, WireGuard isn't supported on the UXG. So it's just, yes. But back over here to firewall rule policies based on Active Directory. This is a fairly advanced feature, but enough people asked on Twitter that I said throw it on there. There's no way I'm aware of doing this at all in PFSense. So if that's, you know, you have AD objects and you have users and you want to apply based on the user, based on some level of authentication, a firewall rule policy based on that Active Directory object. I don't know of any way to do that in Untangle, but you can do that in the uh, Arista. No integration with USG, but the rest of them do have this feature as well. 48 Sophos Meraki. HA proxy. I bring this up not to say that PFSense is cool, it has it, but also it actually is used very popular, especially not just home lab people, but there's sometimes services that you don't want to have to deal with certificates for. You can do this with the Let's Encrypt certificates, which are listed below. Tie to HA proxy, use it locally. So you're not exposing it to the world, but you can if you want. I've done videos on this. Using this to have different local services managed without any certificates uh, errors throughout a internal network, HA proxy is a really convenient way to do that. Um, so I definitely think it's worth having in there. Uh, obviously this is no across the board with an interesting exception. Uh, thanks Christian Lempo for pointing this out that there's a web application type firewall. So there's extra levels of traffic inspection you can do with their uh, built-in web application firewall for services coming from the external going through their WAF to come in there. Uh, technically, I see no on 48 and someone may see, but Tom, 48 sells a product that does that. Yeah, it's just not their firewall. Um, it, it will integrate with it. So I almost put no asterisks, but just so you know, firewall, uh, the firewall does not natively have something built in, but yes, you can buy another service from Meraki. And technically, Meraki is owned by Cisco and there's other services you could buy to put in front of it. But we're trying to keep this at least somewhat scoped. Let's encrypt certificates. No, I don't think there's any way I've seen to do them in the Arista Untangle. Um, if someone has a document I overlooked, let me know. Um, but without the proxy in there, I don't know if that really matters. And USG, nothing in there. And matter of fact, I don't even know why uh, Unify has never integrated the uh, controller software either into Let's Encrypt. Seems like it would be really good to do. I believe they even sponsor some of the Let's Encrypt things. Maybe there's a future roadmap where that is well integrated. I, I hope so. Uh, but today, um, that's not in there. Uh, Fortigate can do this for the firewall. I didn't see an ability to do it for anything else. And no on the Sophos or the Meraki for those certificates. But the biggest reason you want to use them is you're going to be for HA proxy. So I kind of tied those things next to each other together. Captive portal might be another reason to use Let's Encrypt uh, certificates, but yes, you can do this with PFSense. You can do the Arista. The Unify controller software does the portal. So whether you have that software um, running on a UDM Pro or as a separate service on a cloud key or something self-hosted, it, it's going to the controller technically, not the firewall. So I made that note in there. 48, yes. Sophos, yes. Meraki, yes. Traffic monitoring and reporting. I really like NTOP NG. It's great. It gives you a lot of great details on there. It's not a bad tool. It's not going to be as advanced as I think the Arista might have a little bit better, but this is also where you can get to uh, be splitting hairs for what you really want. How granular does it need to be? Is it adequate or do you want something that gives you like this user went to this website and summary reports? The uh, Arista reports are nice for that. Unify and the lack of good time slicing means, yes, it gives you information, but it's a little bit harder to digest. So I'll put that on there that it has it. The graphs look really well presented, but the granularity of them not being good makes them a little bit harder to read, but they, it's checking the box that it has them. Uh, 48 Sophos and Meraki, all are yes. Now, one thing missing from that features list was VLAN support. The answer is yes across the board. So I added it to the list. So if you click that chart, you're gonna have it on that list. Next. I'm just here to provide some data points. I'm not here to be your decision point. I'm not saying these are the only firewalls you can use or you must use PFSense because I have a lot of videos on it. Ultimately, I just wanted to provide some insight to things we've done, things we've worked with, things some of my friends have worked with. And as I said, Christian Lempa really likes Sophos XG. I have a few IT manager friends that really like it. And so I included it on the list, even though I don't directly use it, but hey, uh, he's got a video on it so you can dive into it. And I know he said he's creating some more videos on it as a 
topic. So depending on the future when you're watching this, there may be more videos linked uh, over to his channel on that. Unify is one more I'll bring up because I think Unify is a, a good moving target for improvement. They keep getting better. Uh, they've somewhat invalidated my video about the weird way Unify does VPNs because they're getting better proper VPN support. And maybe uh, we're watching this video or you're watching this video in the future where Unify has made a nice chart so I don't have to chase down like release notes to figure out if they're implementing the VPN in a normal way or they've tied it to some other service like UID to be able to get it to work. As I said, I'm hoping in the future they just do it normal and make a nice chart so we understand what support on which products exist. But nonetheless, that can make Unify a little bit challenging. For routing, I think they work great, like just for basic routing functions. But the VPN is awesome where people get hung up hoping it will do something and finding out Unify has done it slightly different. This is always that nuanced challenge you have with any of these firewalls is having support for a feature versus how they implement it and how easy that feature to use can be uh, varying a bit. Nonetheless, I love hearing from you. Leave your thoughts and comments down below as to which firewalls uh, you like, which one's your favorite. I'm always curious what else is in the market. I try to keep an open mind looking at different things. Head over to my forums for a more in-depth discussion on this topic or any way, anytime you want to engage with me. And thanks.